Pulse 96. Blood pressure's 120 over 80. Vital signs are stable. B1. Charlotte? Do you know her? It's my sister. Charlotte, can you hear me? Eyes reacting to light. Charlotte? Come on, kid. Charlotte? Charlotte, can you hear me? B1. Motor 5. She's localizing. She's Glasgow 7. I need an emergency head CT. All right, check that one. Patients in defib. Nurse crash cart. All right, ready? One, two, three. Give me one amp of epi. Charge jewels to 200. Epi in. Still in defib. Sub CPR. Clear. Resume CPR. No foot pressure. Check that wound. Charlie, I want you to go down to Hillfield to come up here and draw bloods on both these patients. I want a matocrits, ABGs, and I want them cross matched. Tell Phil to run his talk screen too. He's got no rhythm. Time you calling it, Doctor? 123. Dr. Hoskins, you're wanted in surgery. Dr. Hoskins, surgery staff. Okay, they're in for me. I don't want Charlotte to move, all right? I want to see a C-spine series, a chest, and a KUB to meet me up in OR, all right? Gail gets in film on her left arm, all right? We've got another trauma coming in. Let's get him out of here. I'm going down to X-ray. I'll be right back. It'll be all right, honey. You're gonna be all right. Try. Is Charlotte gonna be okay? She looks awful. Uh, I won't know till I run some more tests, but I think it looks worse than it is. Come on, walk with me. Right. How's the little girl? Well, she's in a bad way. We relieved the pressure from her brain, but I'm just gonna have to wait and see. You know, why don't you head on home? There's nothing more you can do here. Nah. I thought I'd stick around here for a while. Well, Dwayne, it's better if you head home. The kids will need you. Really. I mean, I'll call you if there's any change at all. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'll call you. You're in the hospital. There's been an accident. An accident. But you're okay. No, 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 no. I'll be there for the opening statement. Yeah, I know it's a tough one. It's Roderick and Wiley. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be a biggie. Okay. Yeah, we can handle it. 
Yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Damn newspapers. Severe brain injuries. The doctors themselves don't even know what it is. Maybe they found out something we don't know. No, nothing's changed. I spoke to Troy 20 minutes ago. He wants to do a CAT scan at 10 this morning. I want to go. Can I go? I don't think your mother would approve of you two missing school. It's important. And that's it. Nothing's as important as my mom. I know, honey. But it's just a test, and I'm going to be right there with her. But what if some... Let's just see what happens. Dad? Dad? When, when you talk to Mom, can you tell her I'm going to get rid of all that stuff under my bed? She's been with me to for a long time. Okay. Thanks. Did you talk to Grandma? She wanted to come right out on the plane, but I told her to hold off until we got word. Uh, Dad, there's just something that I was wondering about. You and Mom went to the Timmons party together, right? Yeah. And how come she was alone? Well, she left early. But why? I mean, did you have a fight or something? No, yeah, it was about 10 o'clock, and I looked around for her, and she wasn't there. So I just assumed she ducked out early. Maybe because she was tired. You ought to eat something, too, young lady. One piece of that diet bread. It was after 12.30 when the accident happened, wasn't it? Dad, if she left the party at 10, where the heck was she all that time? I mean, the Timmons live, what, six blocks from here? Why, why in the world was she way over on the east side? You're gonna have to ask your mother that. You'll contact me at school if, they, if anything serious comes up. Of course. Well, for once, that hard head of yours paid off. It's a mild concussion. You'll be good as new in a couple weeks. Was any... Was anyone else hurt? Yeah. The driver of the other car and his boy were both killed. What, what happened? Damn guy was drunk. Anyone else? Yes. His little girl is pretty serious. I can't remember, remember anything. Just temporary amnesia. Just nature's way of dealing with trauma. Don't worry, you'll remember everything soon enough. Troy says you'll be coming home on, on Tuesday. Oh, what day is it? Hey, 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 hey. Just relax, okay? Now, that fracture's not a problem. The cast is going to come off in a couple of weeks, but the concussion, that's a whole different matter. Now, the more you rest, the better the chances are there won't be any complications. Now, you do what the doc says. And relax. Gotta go. Troy. Don't worry about anything. Did you mean what you said about her amnesia being temporary? Yeah, that's my hunch, but we'll have to wait and see. Hunch? Look, if she has a problem, I want this thing handled immediately. Dwayne, take it easy. Give her time. She'll come around. And what if she doesn't? Well, if she doesn't, I'll have Leslie speak to her. Dr. Searheed? She's a shrink. Dwayne, will you knock it off? Right now, there's no reason to believe that Charlotte isn't going to be just fine. Well, remember, it's my wife you're talking about. Yeah, I'll remember that. And it's my sister. I'm looking out for her, all right? Yeah. I'll see you. Excuse me. 
Excuse me. I'm Charlotte Ferber. Yes. I can't tell you how very sorry I am about the accident. Me too. I just buried my little boy. I, uh... I've been meaning to come by and apologize for my husband. Damn him! It was an accident. He didn't have to start drinking again. Just look at her. I'll be leaving soon. I just... I want you to know that if you need anything, if you... if you would like for someone to come by and sit with her, or you'd maybe just like to talk, anything at all, You're so nice. Wilma! Wilma! Oh, gosh, it's good to have you home again. I'll get the bags. Okay. Well, now, you just go and relax, and I'll get you a nice cup of hot tea. That sounds great, Wilma. Thank you. Here are your personal things from the hospital. I told the nurses to give away your flowers and your plants to the other patients, like you said. Thank you. Gosh, it feels so good to be home. Feels like it's been forever. How long has it been, Dwayne? Too long. OK, now you just stay here and take all of this medicine. You curl up. You read yourself a book. Relax. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's OK. I gotta go. I got a meeting with a new client. I'll be back in a little while. Dwayne? Would you please hurry, honey? I mean, the kids are not gonna be home for hours. Oh, Mitzi's got an early day. And besides, Wilma's downstairs. Nothing would do but she make one of those chocolate marshmallow okay, cakes honey. you kids are so crazy about. If you ask me, that tops the list of junk food. Like the teeth just fall right out of your hand. Uh, you just sit there and I'll finish up. Okay. Oh, great. I've had to put up with Wilma all day. Now I have to get bossed around by a teenager. Well, somebody has to keep an eye on you. You darn near kill yourself and then you run around like nothing happened. It takes time to get over a jolt like that. Nancy, put on an apron. That outfit just came back from the cleaners. Mm -hmm. What time did you get home, Mom? Well, it was around 11, wasn't it, Wilma? Oh, my God. I skipped home at because I wanted to get home before you. But then I saw Daddy's car at the Timmons, and I figured I was too late. The Timmons? Marcia Timmons? 
Yeah, the bus passes right by there. I guess he stopped by to tell Marcia you were home okay. It must have been an important client. You were gone all afternoon. Well, it took longer than I figured. Lots to talk about. Anyone I know? No, just a client. Did uh, anybody ask about me today? Yeah, my secretary. She told me to tell you to hang in. Anyone else? No, I spent the whole time with the client. Didn't have an opportunity to see anybody else. Has uh, Lloyd come back from his buying trip yet? I don't know. Why? Well, he was uh, leaving the morning after the party. I just wondered if he had heard about the accident. Oh. Hold me, Dwayne. No, I mean, really hold me. <sighs> the accident is stressful. I'm exhausted. I read that's usually the woman's line. Maybe you read too much. You know, I think we need a vacation. After you get your cast off, Maybe we'll go up to the cabin for a couple of days. have to whisper, Charlotte. She can't hear you. I wish she could, but she can't. I think she can. Here. Straight from the Fervor Gourmet kitchen. <laughs> I thought you might be hungry. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I really shouldn't go to all this trouble. Oh, it's just some hot soup and some fruit salad. Well, you know what I mean. I'm coming by here every day for a week you now. Well, today I had an appointment. I got my cast off. Congratulations. I, uh, I want to... I can't tell you how much I appreciate the way you and Mr. Ferber are taking this. Don't be silly. I talked to my brother. Dr. Hoskins, and he said that Nancy's doing a lot better. The eye movement's a good sign. I hope so. <laughs> Last night, when I kissed her goodnight, I thought I felt her eyelashes move on my cheek, but when I looked at her, her little eyes were still closed. She's gonna be okay. Aren't you, sweetie? I just know it. Thanks, I needed to hear that. <laughs> Keeps me going. Eat your soup while it's hot. It's been a long time since I had a box lunch. <laughs> you know, 
I keep wondering if this is my fault. I mean, if Howard were slipping, you'd think I would have known it, wouldn't you? He went to AA meetings three or four times a week. At least that's where he said he was going. I believed him. After all the trouble his drinking had caused. <laughs> he got his license back one month ago. Hope he's in hell for doing this to my babies. Jean. Jean. Jean, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. I can't help it. I do. Oh, Jessica, you look wonderful. Excuse me. Marcia, oh, darling, I am so sorry that we are late. Leave it to Lloyd to have a late customer when we're due someplace. Listen, before I forget and get completely bombed, how about lunch next week? Uh, sure. How's Wednesday? I can't do it on Wednesday. I've got a date. How about Thursday? Thursday's fine. Great. Hi, how are you? Lloyd. Oh, watch the arm. My apologies, darling. But it isn't every day in the week someone comes in at the last minute looking for a three-carat diamond ring. <laughs> no problem. Everyone's still on their first drink. Come on, let's go find the bar. <laughs> the fun we get out of here. I just got a first drink. Oh, yes, I I must say I'm pleasantly surprised at how well you look. I didn't know quite what to expect. Well, I was, uh, lucky. I'm sorry I wasn't here to come see you when you were laid up. I just got back from my annual buying trip late last night. I see you're back to mineral water, darling. Good idea. Excuse me. I want to say hello to Angela and Dick. Sure. Charlotte, I wish you could have been here. She opened her eyes just for a few seconds, but she looked at me. Oh, I'm so happy for you. She certainly is a little fighter. Yeah, all that she is. She's got a little bit of a temperature. It's nothing to worry about. No, no, come on. She's going to be fine. Come on, why don't we go outside? Okay. Mrs. Marshall, this gentleman's been waiting to see you. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. I'm Jonah Ottoman. I'm an adjuster from a placard insurance company. We cover your automobiles. I'm sorry to talk to you at a time like this, but... <clears throat> well, I've been trying to reach you for a couple of days, and... a neighbor told me where I could find you. I have some questions about the accident. Now? This is very important. Okay, if we could make it fast, please. Has anyone from Mrs. Ferber's insurance company contacted you? No. A lawyer, maybe? No, nobody. Look, if you're worried that they're going to sue, you can relax. I, I know it's hard to believe under these circumstances, but it's true. She told me I don't have to worry about them making any trouble. I wouldn't count on that. Well, I, I really can't talk any longer. I have to get back to my daughter. Excuse me. You have my card. Please call when they contact you. I don't want a summary. I want the entire deposition. 
Now, Riker has contradicted himself a dozen times, and I want to nail him on it. Oh, sorry about lunch, honey. Well, that's okay. Uh, as it turned out, I'm glad because I would have missed Jane's call. Nancy woke up. It was only for a few seconds, but Troy said it was... Hey, hey, oh, excuse me a second. Uh, Edna. Yeah, have Dave do a printout on Riker's business report. All right? Yeah, I'll go over with him later. I'm sorry, where were we? Well, uh, I was saying I, I uh, had a long talk with her today, and she was telling me uh, that she's going to have to sell her house to pay for her medical bills. And I was wondering if our insurance might help cover some of it. I, I don't know. You carry a big umbrella, and I thought... Uh, you know how insurance companies think. It wasn't your fault. How do we know that? That it wasn't my fault. The son of a bitch had three DUIs in the last four years. And he was bombed out of his eyes on that night. That's how we know it. Well, I went down today to the police station and I... You did what? Well, it looks like I hit him. The way his car was rolled over like that? I, I don't see how... It doesn't matter who hit who. According to the police report, it's a case of drunken driving. Pure and simple. Now back off. I can't. Two people are dead. There is a little girl in there fighting for her life. God, if I could just... If I could just remember what happened. I keep getting these... These flashes. Look, it is only natural for someone to feel responsibility in this kind of thing. It wasn't your fault. I just feel so sorry for Jane. She does not deserve this. Isn't there something we can do to help her? Well, we are helping her. Under these circumstances, we could sue. Sure. That's just what she needs. Just let me handle it, okay? I thought you were giving those up. I am. I am. This is only my second one today. Oh, sure, sure, sure. So what'd you find out? That some people still believe in fairy tales. Meaning? Martley's convinced that the Ferbers won't sue. Sure. No, something else. You know that Mrs. Ferber was over at the police department asking questions, looking at photos of the accident. And then she wanted to know where they had taken the cars. And I wonder why. That's a good question. One thing is sure. If Dwayne Ferber doesn't hit us with a six-figure suit, something is awfully screwy. Yeah, well, that's the way I figure it, too. You know, Troy, I'm really worried about Charlotte. What do you mean you're worried about Charlotte? I thought she was doing great. She can't seem to get this accident off her mind. Remember you said this loss of memory would be only temporary? Yeah. She's driving herself nuts trying to remember. Well, there's no reason why she shouldn't remember everything by now. Unless she's in denial. She may not want to remember. Dwayne, she was in a pretty bad accident, right? She came out of it pretty good. But those two people are dead. And knowing her like I do, it's going to be pretty hard for her to take. Well, it's harder than everybody. It's harder than all of us. I mean, I'm up to my ears in the office with this Riker case. And now this. I mean, uh, Charlotte's just not herself anymore. Well, maybe it's time to see Dr. Siri, don't you think? It won't work. Forget it, she'll never go. How do you know that? Did you talk to her? Wayne, Dr. Searhe can help her. Let me speak to Charlotte. Oh, Mrs. Ferber, it's a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. Uh, Dr. Searhe, I, I have to be honest. Uh, I'm here, really 
just because my brother insisted. I understand. Won't you please sit down? May I call you Charlotte? Yes, certainly. Well, shall we get started? Ah, Mrs. Ferba. She's not here. Oh, well, I've got an appointment with her. Would you have her call me as soon as possible? It's very important. He asked for Charlotte. Mr. Otterman. Yes. What would you like to talk to my wife about? Well, about the accident, Mr. Ferber. Uh, medical bills have been forwarded to your office. My insurance company is sending you all the necessary information you need to know about my wife's car. What else do you need to know? Well, I'd like to get a statement from your wife on how it happened. Do you have a copy of the police report? Yes. But I have a few questions that are not on the police report. Mr. Otterman, my wife suffered a severe concussion. She remembers nothing about the accident. I was under the impression uh, that the injuries she received were relatively minor. Is that what you call a broken arm? Cuts and bruises all over. Can't remember a Thank darn you, thing. Woman. If you have any further questions, please contact my insurance carrier. They have a full report of the accident. I'd rather talk to your wife. You heard what I said. Charlotte, I have to talk to you. I had a big problem. I'm going to be honest with you. Charlotte, I'm leaving Lloyd. You're what? Oh, I figured you'd be upset. How does Lloyd feel about this? He doesn't know. I want to talk to you first. Why me, Marcia? Because it concerns you. It concerns all of us. Please don't blame me. You see, for the first time in my life, I'm in love and I'm happy. We didn't want it to happen like this, it just did. We were gonna tell you, but then you had the accident and we didn't think that you'd be able to... Nice surprise. Dwayne and I were just gonna have some lunch ourselves. We join you? Well, that sounds like an offer we can't refuse, huh? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to leave. I'll be right back. Charlotte. Charlotte? What's wrong? Did you see Dr. Siri today? I don't want to talk about this right now. She's got pneumonia. My mother's not taking it too well. <laughs> How did this happen? Just yesterday morning, Nancy was doing so well. I know, I know. It happened all of a sudden. Will she be all right? Well, we're doing all we can. Charlotte, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to upset you guys. I just, I had to find somebody to take care of that poor woman. No, no I'm glad you called. She needs me. Oh, God. If anything happens to Nancy, she'll have no one. There's no one we can call, no relatives? Her parents live in Boulder, Colorado, I think. Nobody around here, I mean. She didn't mention anyone. What room is Jane in? Right there, 106. It isn't a good idea getting Charlotte more involved in this woman's problems. 
She's here all the time as it is. Dwayne, she is involved. All right? And frankly, I don't think there's any chance of keeping her away. Well, I'm going to try and locate Jean's father and get him out here. I mean, it is his problem. Darling, there's nothing you can do for her now. The doctor says she's going to be out of it for at least another two hours. It's almost morning. The kids are going to be wondering where we are. You go on. I want to be here when she wakes up. Last minute cramming? Mm. Today our debate team is going over to Clover City to compete. So I had to study up on four different subjects. It won't tell us which one we're going to do. You know, Mom didn't even pick up my blue sweater and my white skirt at the cleaners. I'm going to be the only one there who's not in uniform. Where is she, anyway? At the hospital for us. She practically lives there. You're not going to school like that, are you? No, I'm gonna comb my hair. No, I don't mean that. I mean, your shirt. It looks like you slept in it. It's all I could find. Wilma's doing ironing today. She's late. She must have missed the bus. I'm gonna be late. Yeah, hello. All right, hold on. Bra Bra Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Bra you better hurry up. Uh, you're uh, gonna be late. Can I have so much money? Yeah. You shouldn't call her this hour, Marsha. Yeah. Uh, what if Charlotte had answered? Yeah, I know you're best friends. Uh, but best friends don't call here at 7.30. Yeah. We're still on. Four o'clock. Bye. Will you please try and eat something? I couldn't. You got me so doped up, I can't even think straight. You need the rest. I need to be with my daughter. They're taking good care of her. I've been in checking up on her, and she's fine. Then why don't they let me see her? They will as soon as you're okay. I am okay. Uh, <clears throat> Dwayne called your father, and he said that he'd be... My father? You called my father? Why did you call my father? He sounded like he was glad to hear... For God's sake, Charlotte! My mom's got Alzheimer's. There's no way you can leave her. I'm sorry. <sighs> she slips out of the house any chance she gets I'm place. sorry. I was just trying to help. Well, don't! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. breakfast. No, no, no. I, I've got to go home. All right. I need one second, though. Okay. Spoke to Dr. Sergei. Mm-hmm. You left without making another appointment. I've just been busy. I understand. But busy or not, I scheduled an appointment for you Wednesday morning at 10. Like you to keep it? Deal? Okay. Thank you very much. I'll get you for that.
Hey, buddy, I've got a question for you. What happened with the red station wagon that came in with this car? I wanted to inspect that car. But that gal did. What gal? The woman who was out here earlier. Said she was from some insurance company. Figured it was your outfit. Did you get her name? No. She didn't give me no card. Just asked me a lot of questions. I want to know what I thought. Yeah, like what? Like how I think it happened. You know, did the wagon hit the Mercedes or the other way around? Well, what do you think? Well, I ain't no fortune teller. But from the way them cars was banged up, it looks to me like this Mercedes hit that wagon going like a bat out of hell. The car was so tore up, I couldn't even salvage a door handle. Well, listen, I don't want you to move this car. I'm going to bring somebody down to have them go through it. Two days, unless I hear it from the authorities. You'll hear it from the authorities. Yeah, right, right. Hey, Smitty, get that Chevy move! Charlotte, I want you to know I'm here for you. Someone for you to talk to. Okay? Okay. Sugar? No, thank you. When I was a little girl, my grandmother introduced drinking tea to me by sweetening it, and I never got over it. I wasn't sure you'd come today. Well, you know, I've... I've been busy with my family and everything, and I've... I've been spending a lot of time at the hospital. I understand the child is improving. Well, I wish there was more I could do. I just... I just feel so helpless. Your brother tells me that you've been very supportive of the girl's mother. I think I make up for what she's been through. Listen to me, Charlotte. You've been through a traumatic experience. Suffering feelings of guilt is a normal response given the circumstances, but you've got to stop torturing yourself. I just can't help this feeling if I hadn't been there, you know, just at that moment, that they'd still be alive. Did you know that that little boy was only six years old when he died? So what I'm hearing is it would have been justifiable if you had perished in that crash. Hmm? I, have, I have two children who need me. Charlotte, you don't have to defend your gratitude to be alive. This was an accident. It could not be avoided. But that's just it. Could I... Charlotte, are you all right? I'm fine. I, I, I can't talk right, right now. Charlotte? Charlotte?
lay down, Lucky. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, but there was an accident on the corner a few weeks ago, and I was, uh, I was wondering if you could tell me anything about it. What does she want? She's, a she's asking about the wreck. We don't know nothing about it. Uh, please. Please. This is really important. Well, all right. I knew this was coming. Come on in. I didn't say I couldn't help her, Duane. I said she won't let me. There's a lot going on with her besides that accident, and she won't open up. The only advice I can give you is to just be there for her. Thanks a lot, Leslie. I appreciate your help. Mr. Ferber, it's your wife on line two. Thanks. Hello. Calm down, Charlotte. I can't understand you. Well, what are you doing there? Meet me at Manchester Park. Right now. First, you go to the police. Then you start nosing around that damn wrecking yard. Just what the hell are you trying to prove? That I was right. The man over there said there was no way the front end of my car could have been smashed up like that unless I was just flying. It really doesn't matter. It's over and done now. Well, tell that to Jean. She lost her little boy. And God knows if Nancy will ever be right again. She hates her husband so much, she won't even put a tombstone on his grave. Can't hurt any now, can it? Well, it's tearing her apart. And what about the insurance? Our company ought to be paying. Is that what you're after? You want this woman's bills paid for her. I want the right thing done. And what is the right thing? For you to go mouthing off until you get us all in deep trouble? I'm not going to stand here and listen to you. Yes, you are. You are going to listen. You're going to lay off. You're going to go home and take care of your own family. But lay off. Let go of me. Charlotte. 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 I'm sorry. Dwayne, all I'm trying to do is find out what really happened that night. Suppose you find out that you ran the signal and you wiped out two people. Stop it. And if someone takes a really hard look at this case and they find out exactly what happened, that you were speeding, we could be facing a $5 million lawsuit. Jean would never do that. No? No. How naive can you be? The cars, the house, the kids' college fund. Where do you think that came from? I could retire on a case like the one you're building. Look. The little girl's coming out of intensive care. Troy expects a full recovery. Let's be grateful for that. I know you're having a hell of a time. Why don't we pack a few things and go to the camp? We can't. Yeah, sure we can. Look, Wilma, watch the kids. Come on, come on. Being alone with you is heaven. 
I was beginning to think you weren't in love with me anymore. Why on earth would you think that? Oh, I know you love me. But I mean, in love, there's a difference. But I'm not in love with you. I'm madly in love with you. <laughs> I'm glad we came up here. My head was really getting screwed up. Oh, you're going through a tough time. It's not just the accident, Wayne. It's you and me. I was beginning to feel... I couldn't bear it if I lost you. You've been my whole life. <sighs> Ever since high school. <laughs> Girl, those times are so simple. We didn't have a care in the world. I did. I was worried sick that Pauline Griffith was going to get her claws in you. <laughs> Not after we made out in the back of my father's pickup. <laughs> oh, God, remember that? Yeah. I'm starving. Oh, if I'm cooking dinner, I better put the steaks on. Steaks are ready. Looks good. Dwayne, I, uh, I was wondering, did anyone see me leave the Timmins party? I thought we came up here so we can forget about that. Did you ask? Sure, I asked, but nobody knew. Oh, weren't you a little curious? I mean, didn't you look for me? Of course I looked for you. When I saw you weren't there, I went outside, and that's when I noticed your car was gone. And didn't you think that was strange, me leaving without telling anyone? Are we going to spoil a good meal? You know, I thought we'd take out the skip tomorrow and try to catch some trout. What do you think? Fine. Someone said you went outside. I thought you went out to get some fresh air. So when I went out there and I didn't see you, that's when I noticed that your car was gone. And you didn't think that was odd? No, I just thought you probably got bored and left. I am not in the habit of taking off like that, leaving you stranded. You know I get a ride. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I'm going to hack off that branch that's been keeping us up all night. I'll be up in a minute.
I feel better now. All nice and clean. Oh my God, you're awake. <laughs> oh, my baby's awake. Okay, mommy's got you, honey. Okay. Oh, thanks, Bill. Look here. Look at all your friends and neighbors who came to tell you hi. Welcome home, Nancy. We're glad you're back. <laughs> thanks, guys. That was really nice of you. Thanks. Oh, I bet it looks good to be home, huh, honey? See all your toys now. Assuming the woman at the Henderson house was Charlotte Ferber, my guess is she's doing late work for her husband. First, she asks questions around the neighborhood where the accident happened. Then she shows up at the wrecking yard. Bingo. One hell of a lawsuit. Afraid so. Well, it's sure going to come as a shock to that Markley woman. Say, tell me, what'd you make out of those pieces of glass I found in the Mercedes? I could have flown in when they collided. Not likely. No. I found some of that glass behind the front seat. Well, I will know a lot more once the lab gives us a report. Oh, another thing, Sydney. Somebody threw up in that car. So what does that prove? Well, I don't know, but maybe... Maybe Charlotte Ferber got sick, lost control of the car. It's possible. You're reaching, Jonah. Anyway, who says it was her? That old man sure didn't dream it up when he said that the Mercedes was out of control when it hit that station wagon. He was scared to death that he might have to testify. I had a hell of a time getting a statement out of him. Won't make much difference now, I'm afraid. Drunk driving's hard to beat. Say, you know, if those pieces of glass I found in the Mercedes match up with a whiskey bottle the officer found at the scene of the accident, we might just have ourselves two drunk drivers. Oh, that was so sweet. I'm sorry I missed Nancy's homecoming. Oh, that's her. Okay. Come on in. You'll have to excuse the house. My husband and I were out of town for the weekend. We just came back. I'm so happy that Nancy's home. <sighs> yeah, it's such a relief. I, I'm sorry I don't have much to offer you. I haven't had time to stock up oh, yet. It's, it's fine. <laughs> the neighbors have been really nice, you know, offering to sit with Nancy and everything. It's... Just a little early. I, I wouldn't feel easy yet. If you make a list, I'd be happy to shop for you. Oh, oh thanks. And Fern Henderson called this morning and said she was going to the market anyway, and she'd pick me up some stuff. And Oh, I called Mothers Against Drunk Driving, you know? And one of their victim's advocates is going to come over. Well, if you need anything, just call, okay? Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm just happy that Nancy's doing so well. And Troy says it's just a matter of time now. Oh, yeah. I think it'll be better now that she's home. She stays awake for longer periods of time, and she stares. <laughs> Sorry. You know, like, she's trying to tell me something. Julia, oh, look. I would, I'd like to... This is little Howard. <laughs> He's beautiful. He was such a little live wire. I used to tell him I wish he could sit still for just one minute. Boy. How I'd love to hear him thumping that spoon on the kitchen table or run it through the house. He was always doing something. Nancy didn't want to take him that night because she said he'd buck all her friends. I made them take him so I could have a night by myself. <sighs> why, Charlotte, why? You don't have to keep it in, you know. <sighs> oh, I don't. I get it out in a lot of useless ways. <sighs> the other night I was up till midnight tearing every miserable picture of that bastard I could find. Went through every album. Doesn't help much, but it's something. Hey, 
Hi. May I have a word with you and Mrs. Markley? <sighs> Mr. Otterman, nothing's changed since the last time we talked. I'm afraid it has. We have reason to believe that your husband might not have been responsible for the accident. My husband was drunk. Your insurance company may not like that, but he was. Maybe so, but things have come up suggesting that the driver of the other car might have been intoxicated as well. Charlotte Ferber? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Or maybe you do. Maybe your company's just trying to get out of pain. Well, I'm not going to stand here and listen to you say things like that about one of the nicest people I've ever met. Well, nice people drink too, Mrs. Markley. Now, if you care about your daughter, you'll listen. It was assumed that fragments of a whiskey bottle found at the scene came from your husband's vehicle. But laboratory tests proved that the same shards of glass I found in Mrs. Ferber's car came from the same bottle. That doesn't prove anything. Well, not in itself it doesn't. There's enough evidence there to warrant further investigation. If we can prove... Well, don't expect any help from me. Charlotte Ferber has been a wonderful friend through all of this. Excuse me. Mrs. Markley, if you listen, it could make a big difference in your future and your daughter's. She's going to need a lot of care. That's going to cost a lot of money. Maybe for the rest of her life. Go away, Mr. Otterman. Leave me alone. Yeah, okay. Bye. Put some eggs on to boil, will you? I stopped at the deli and picked up some potato salad, hamburger buns. Since it's so nice out, I thought we'd eat outside, barbecue. Well, that was Dad on the phone. He said he's not going to be home. Did he say when he would be? No, just that he's got a lot of work to catch up on, not to wait dinner. He said he'd grab a sandwich later. Well, I'm going to change. Put away the groceries, please. Hey. Troy was going to be working about half the night again. So I decided I might come over and watch a movie with you guys. Now, huh? what do you say? Oh, and Hazel, you are just in time. Brad needs a math teacher. Oh, boy. Okay, kid, what's the problem? You've reached the law offices of Harwell, Ferber, and Associates. Please leave your name, number, and a message. I'm, uh, I'm going out for a few minutes. You're not going over to the Markleys again, are you? No, I'm not going over to the Markleys again. I forgot something at the store. I won't be long. Columbia with drugs fighting their way to large city centers. 25 people have been arrested and face charges ranging from smuggling to possession for the purpose of... better than you did last time. What'll it be? Uh, soda, please. Soda and? Uh, just soda, please. 
Coming up. Can I ask you something? Um, what did you mean that I looked better than the last time? Honey, you didn't know up from down. Surprised you had the presence of mind to know you oughtn't to be driving. It's a good thing Ernie's not here. I don't know what you did to him, but he sure was ticked off. Excuse me. I fall. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the matter, honey? You look a little ragged. Excuse me. Excuse me, bartender. Would you please call me a cab? I don't think I can drive. Oh, never mind, Harry. I'll make sure the little woman gets home. I'm gonna find her own way. What out, Flo. I mean, can't you see the little woman needs help? Come on, have a heart. Let's have your keys, honey. Easy does it now, okay? Whoops. Oh, okay, easy does it. Oh. All right. Lane, waiting, Ernie. Just stay put, honey, and I'll be back for you in a jiffy. Don't you move, okay? Sure was frosted. Said he should have let you go on and pay for a cab. I wish he had. What'd you say? Never mind.
kill them both. about our family. Did you ever think of that? Yes, I have. And I've thought about Jean's family, too. If you take responsibility for this, what difference does it make? It makes a difference to Jean. She can stop hating her husband. It was an accident. Is that the position you take when you've got some poor bastard in court and you're going after him for everything he's got? Charlotte, when I take on a case in court, I do everything I can for that client. Now, if Jean finds out that her husband was not the only one drinking that night, she'll hire the biggest legal gun she can find, and we can lose everything. That's really what it's all about, isn't it, Wayne? That the Ferbers don't lose. What difference does it make? The guy's dead. Get out. Get out. Charlotte? Yes? Charlotte, your brother's here. Shall I send him upstairs? No. Tell him I'll be right down. Hey. Can I get you something, some juice? Oh, no, no, I'm fine, Mama Pigs. Well, you don't look like the bearer of good news. It's that obvious, huh? Charlotte, I don't really know how to, how to start this. Marsha and Lloyd, their marriage has been in trouble for a long time. They're breaking up. Marsha's in love with someone else. Did Dwayne put you up to this? Dwayne? No. No. I just decided that this has gone on long enough. Uh, Charlotte, I'm sorry. I'm going to mess this up, too. Look, I wanted to tell you this a long time ago. I mean, Marcia tried to tell you, but, well, Dwayne was trying to you know, he was trying to work everything out for Hazel and the kids. I mean, I know how you feel about Hazel. And it's just not there for us anymore. At least it's not there for me. You and Marsha? Yes. Oh, my God. Charlotte. Charlotte? I thought it was Dwayne and Marsha. Dwayne? <laughs> no. That night at the party, I kept seeing them together. Everywhere I looked, there they were. And not just the party. I saw them in town together. Well, yeah, they were seeing a divorce lawyer. Charlotte, I'm sorry. Why didn't he tell me? I'm his wife. I'm sure he was just trying to protect you. Protect me? Yes. 
That's why I killed a little boy and his father. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? I was drunk. No, Markley was drunk. I've got to go to the police. Police? Charlotte, wait a minute. Now, if what you're saying is true, I mean, you realize that we're talking about manslaughter. You could go to jail. See, it's right there. Mm -hmm. October 4th, uh, toxic levels 0.17, twice the legal limit. Mm. Did you, uh, run a test on the driver of the other car? Uh, no. No, I just checked out the woman like they told me to. The woman? Let me see that file again. The label in this report says Howard Markley. Oh. That isn't right. How did that get there? Hey, Charlie, you screwed up the labels again, didn't you? What are you talking about, Phil? Ooh. I did the labels for the kid, the woman, and the guy that died. They already had the kid in surgery, so I left hers with a nurse. All the other sheets, I left there in emergency. I remember positively drawing blood on that woman. And I don't know how Markley's name got on that. You're sure this test was done on Charlotte Ferber? If that's the name of the woman in the accident, yes. I'm positive. Phil, you weren't supposed to do her. You were supposed to do the guy driving the station wagon. I go to emergency and there's this woman lying there. How am I supposed to know? Look, it's not my fault you screwed up the labels. You're positive. You're absolutely certain that the results of this test was from blood drawn from Charlotte Ferber and not Howard Markley as originally reported. Yeah, I'm positive. Well, then you're going to have to sign a statement to that effect. And I could lose my job over this. I came back to say I'm sorry. You messed up that night, but I was wrong to expect you to compromise your integrity. I should have known you couldn't live with that. chocolate cake for breakfast. I don't either. Anyway, Wilma's off for the day. Good. Brad, uh, I, I don't think I've told you lately that I love you. I love you too, Mom. Come here. Mm, big hug. Stay out of trouble. Did I do something wrong? No, uh, I just, uh, well, I need to tell you something, Mitzi.
Honey, this is going to be difficult. <clears throat> There's hard decisions and easy outs. But being honest with yourself is what really counts. That's what you said. I did, didn't I? Thanks for reminding me. Mr. Otterman, I, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Neither did I. Mrs. Markley, if you give me a moment of your time, you'll be happy you did. All right. I hope you get this message, Jean. Charlotte, I... I wanted to tell you everything in person. I, I tried. I came by this morning to see you, but you weren't home. Gee. You bitch! You lied to me! Gee. You thought you were my friend! You killed Howard! You were you that was drunk! It was you! <gasps> this morning, but you weren't home. I've been to the police, and I'm going in for the arraignment on Tuesday. I don't want you to blame your husband for the accident. It was my fault, Jane. I'm scared. You do fine. I'm very proud of you. I'll be right there. Get your message. Somehow I 
I know. 